Section 93 of Women of History. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Pamela Krantz. Women of History by Anonymous. Felicia Hemans. Born 1794, died 1835. Jeffrey. The business of women being with actual or social life, and the colors it receives from the conduct and dispositions of individuals, they unconsciously acquire at a very early age the finest perception of characters and manners, and are almost as soon instinctively schooled in the deep and dangerous learning of feeling and emotion. While the very minuteness with which they make and meditate on these interesting observations, and the finer shades and variations of sentiment which are thus treasured and recorded, trains their whole faculties to a nicety and precision of operation which often discloses itself to advantage in their application to studies of a different character. When women accordingly have turned their minds, as they have done but too seldom, to the exposition or arrangement of any branch of knowledge, they have commonly exhibited, we think, a more beautiful accuracy and a more uniform and complete justness of thinking than their less discriminating brethren. There is a finish and completeness, in short, about everything they put out of their hands, which indicates not only an inherent taste for elegance and neatness, but a habit of nice observation and singular exactness of judgment. We have not as yet much female poetry. That of Mrs. Hemans is a fine exemplification. It may not be the best imaginable poetry, and may not indicate the very highest or most commanding genius, but it embraces a great deal of that which gives the very best poetry its chief power of pleasing, and would strike us, perhaps, as more impassioned and exalted, if it were not regulated and harmonized by the most beautiful taste. It is singularly sweet, elegant, and tender, touching, perhaps, and contemplative, rather than vehement and overpowering, and not only finished throughout with an exquisite delicacy and even severity of execution, but informed with a purity and loftiness of feeling, and a certain sober and humble tone of indulgence and piety, which must satisfy all judgments, and allay the apprehensions of those who are most afraid of the passionate exaggerations of poetry. Almost all her poems are rich with fine descriptions, and studded over with images of visible beauty. But these are never idle ornaments, all her pomps have a meaning, and her flowers and her gems are arranged, as they are said to be among Eastern lovers, so as to speak the language of truth or of passion. This is peculiarly remarkable in some little pieces, which seem at first sight to be purely descriptive but are soon found to tell upon the heart with a deep moral and pathetic impression but it is in truth nearly as conspicuous in the greater part of her productions where we scarcely meet with any striking sentiment that is not ushered in by some such symphony of external nature and scarcely a lovely picture that does not serve as an appropriate foreground to some deep or lofty emotion End of Felicia Hemans. Recording by Pamela Krantz.